What is up everyone? Don Chaos here and tonight I'm joined by a very special guest. Go introduce yourself, man. What up y'all, DC Fable guy? And why don't you get in to tell everyone what we're going to review tonight. So we're doing a collaborative review of Tech 9s collabo, Strangulation. I was definitely impressed with this album. I have to say it's his best collabos album. There's really only one song I skipped over that I still skip over, and that one was uh, Which One? But um, I love the fact that the album is called Strangulation. It is the act of strange music put in the music industry in a chokehold and everything on this album you got they, they showcase a different style of music to basically say strange music can do whatever kind of music that I think was really captivating you start with hard you get over it and the fucking album just like skyrockets and then you just got songs going like this and then you know you slowly descend to the end of the album it's just a great ride from beginning to end uh, favorite song would definitely have to be American Horror Story featuring Sess Crew. I love the beat. I love the way they all flowed with it. It's definitely a favorite. My second favorite would probably have to be Fear. I love the way Tech talks about his fear of his mom forgetting him. It's definitely one fear I have. Not, not that my mom would forget me, but my fear would definitely be growing old and suffering from dementia and Alzheimer's and all that. My favorite cipher verse, I'd have to say Prozac fucking killed it. Hands down, I'd have to say he did. I loved them all, but Prozac's, he fucking grabbed my attention and I loved it. Yeah, you notice how in the, if you watch the video, he's holding up a triangle too. <laughs> Coincidental? Maybe. Who knows? <laughs> Everybody's a member of the Illuminati. Yeah, some of us on here could be, you never know. But yeah, if I had to choose my favorite songs, like, mine would be Hard, Over It, Make Waves. I even like the They Don't Care remix, and then I like Red Rags. Have you heard the original Nobody Cares? I, I was trying to find it on YouTube, but I can't find it. Dude, I'll email that shit to you, because I, I, I got that from the pre-order. Isn't that from something else? The Nobody Cares? No, actually what they did, um, I think they recorded the song. It was supposed to be on Strangulation. Uh, the beat is really fucking awesome. I think somewhere along the line they decided they wanted to do more with that song, which is why they did the remix. And they actually, the original Nobody Cares only has Chris Calico and uh, Stevie Stone in it, whereas the remix has Mayday and Cess Crew in it. So I think they wanted to take it somewhere more and add on to it is why they did the remix. It's the exact same beat, exact same chorus. It's just text verse, Stevie Stone's verse, and Chris Calico's verse. They redid them. Yeah, I really liked that verse that Tech 9 did in that song. He's like, I'm going to keep pushing this hip-hop music until I become mayor. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that was definitely a good one. You mentioned Red Rags. That was, for the longest time, when I first listened to the album, first two weeks I listened to it, Red Rags was my favorite. It's the one I listened to over and over again the most. I love the fact that Red Rags took me back to, I gotta think of a bad season, the mixtape he did. It reminded me of the song Back on the Block because it had everybody, all the same people in it. And, you know, of course, it's about, I guess you could say, being a gangster in a way, you know, down for the block. Well, because if you know Tech Nine's history, he actually is a blood gang member, and he's staying out with a lot of bloods. Yeah, I love the way they mixed the, uh, the sample off of Ever Ready, off of Come Gangsta, but also on the same hand, the beat. When I listen to the beat, it kind of reminds me of Big Scoob off of uh, Misery Loves Company. The beat sounds like that, and then you got samples off of Ever Ready. Uh, to me, it was kind of like it reminded me of the old. You hear a lot of technicians talk about that older style of Tech Nine's music. It kind of it was reminiscent of that for me because of that, because of the sample and the beat sounding the way it did. Yeah, and a little history lesson for those that probably don't know, Tech Nine and Big Scoob actually go way back. They've known each other since middle school. And they were part of the fifty seven Road Street Street Road Dog villains, right? Probably just fucked that all up. Yeah, you said it right. Okay. I was gonna... That's actually named after a street in Kansas City. So what was your favorite Cypher verse? 
Like, I do agree Prozac's was, like, re really good, but it's just because Prozac is actually one of my favorite artists. I did like Brother Lynch Hung's, I liked Ritz's, and then I did like even Chris Calico's, but it's just because Chris Calico is actually a really talented dude. What I thought was funny was when, um, I think it was back in March, maybe even February, when Tech 9 and Murs and Chris Calico were on the Wake Up Show with Sway in the Morning, they did a little cipher, and actually Murs and Chris Calico spit their strangulation cipher verse. That would have been pretty awesome if Tech did his too. They wouldn't have even known. Right. And just that song, Hard, that song, like, bumps, like, it sounds really good, like, loud in the car. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm saying, dude. They started the album off with Hard and Over It, songs they'd already released, but even though you've heard them and you've probably been bumping them for weeks like I have, you know, it just it set the album, like, straight off the bat, straight to the sky. It's like, dude, this album's going somewhere. Well, and, like... How Tech is saying, he's actually getting better with age, whereas most hip-hop artists, when they get older, some of them, like, start to, like, wind down a little bit. Tech is definitely showing it doesn't matter how much music he releases, that he's actually still getting better and getting more clever with his rhymes. Oh, yeah. I mean, come on, he says, my shit is hard, constipated. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's talking about his music, but he's, like, making it very clever. Yeah. When throwing that touch of humor in there. One of my other favorite verses on that song is when he says, We smoke in hell enough to bring Bob Marley back. <laughs> yeah. I also liked that song, Make Waves. I could picture that song live with a live band playing while he's performing that song. Oh, I know. Ritz killed it on that one. Ritz has got me really... On this album, he got me to the point where I'm definitely ready to pick up the... Johnny Valiant CD that he released. That's a really good debut CD of his on Strange Music. Yeah, I've been listening to some of his singles on uh, Strange Music's YouTube page. Like that song, Switch Lanes, that's a good song just to like drive around to. Yeah, see, and that's the thing. This album, Nana, nah, um, I was talking to you right before we went live. Nana nah reminded me of, I don't know if anybody remembers from back in the day in the 90s, the... Uh, uh, an R&B artist, Keith Sweat, Keith Sweet, however his name's pronounced, did a lot of R&B style songs, and Na Na reminded, it was very reminiscent of the 90s R&B, which again is just them showcasing they can do any kind of music, any style of music, their way. Make Waves is that type of song too, to show that Tech 9 can't, he can rap even over a hard heavy metal beat. Oh yeah, oh dude, he's... I mean, he definitely shows that he is more than just a rapper. He is definitely an artist, and he shows that with therapy. But, I mean, we won't talk about therapy. This is about strangulation right now. What do you think of the Straight Out the Gate remix, or do you think the original's better? Honestly, I had, I'm, I'm not a big fan of remixes. I like the fact that it was pretty much the same. It just had more of a... When I was listening to it, I was actually at work and I had headphones on. It was like fucking thumping in my ears. It had more of a uh, a hit to it with bass, and I kind of liked it. But I I am more favorable to the original. But it was pretty good. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I think the remix was meant to feel like the whole beat was meant to feel more like a heavy metal song since it had surge on it. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of bonus tracks. If we were talking about, if we were, I didn't really include bonus tracks when I said my favorite song, but Suck Meg, which I guess from what I understand, I think I've seen, uh, Tech Knight said that's actually supposed to be Danish for Suck Me. And um, that's probably, if you was to include the bonus tracks, that's definitely got to be one of my favorite songs. Just because the beat is so catchy, the chorus is so catchy. I've actually been walking through work. I'm in a retail store and I'm fucking walking through just na 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 suck man. <laughs> Watch you get someone that's Danish and comes in and knows what you're singing and they're like, excuse me? <laughs> it was just a really catchy song. They get stuck in my head and I'm probably going to have it in my head now. And that's one thing why I've always liked Tech 9 He has those songs that like get very catchy in your head and you'll just catch yourself singing them out of nowhere. Uh-huh. 
Especially me when I'm like cleaning the house, I'll just catch myself singing it out of nowhere. <laughs> There's one kid at work. He's um, he just turned 21. He's like in love with Lil Wayne, and I'm all the time trying to get him to listen to Tech Nine because of that kind of common barrier, I guess you could say. I introduced him to Sutmig because he all the time he also watches South Park and he quotes. Eric Cartman all the time with Seth Mabas. So I told him, I was like, dude, you'll have to, you'll, I know you'll love this song because it's right up your alley. And he actually did dig it. Do you ever get that, like, have that, like, thing where, like, a lot of the people around you that never even heard of Tech 9 they all of a sudden, like, like him now because you, like, said something or you introduced them to him? Yeah. I'm always doing that. I've actually, there's been other employees that have worked there. I'll burn CDs off, a couple of CDs off for him just to get him into it. Because I'm all about spreading music. It's like how I am. Almost everyone that's come in contact with me ends up liking Tech 9 Yeah. Well, because one guy, he told me he had heard of Tech 9 but he didn't really like it. But the only album he had heard was Psychology 101. I was like, oh, dude, you've only heard a piece. And so I burn I, know, I always tell people when a new album of his comes out, go check out his old stuff too, because his old stuff is still straight fire. Yeah. I've actually got to get a hold of him and let him know there's some newer stuff. I've only given him a small handful. I'll probably be like, here, here's a little more exposure for you. Go fucking support this shit. I've been listening to tech pretty much since I was like in high school and stuff, probably even longer than that. <laughs> I've only been listening since 2008. I remember hearing I'm a Tell back in like 2005, but that was like right when I was, I just got back from New Zealand and I was starting to get some resources to where I was able to listen to more ICP, so I was kind of, I was at that point where I was sh shunning everything else away and absorbing everything because I just discovered Twisted and I just discovered Dark Lotus, so I had heard of him back then, but I didn't get into him until 2008. And it was with absolute power, so I mean, I started with some of the back catalog and then moved forward. What do you think people are going to say about that triangle on the back? <laughs> More Illuminati shit, man, I'm telling you. When Tech 9 says he wants to be the hip-hop president, he also wants to be the leader of the Illuminati. That's his goals. Then everybody has to listen to him. <laughs> Who knows? He does put on a really good live show if no one's ever seen him live yet. I've only seen him once. I definitely want to see him again. Um, I hit VIP, and I'm actually, I can't even see this. I actually, Hostile Takeover Tour, I seen him then, and I hit VIP. And I actually want to hit VIP with him again, because I was telling Don Chaos before we went live. I had a very short encounter with Tech. It was a quick handshake. He gave me his autograph. He asked me if I had a camera. I said no. I was it. We parted ways. It was kind of a disappointment, so I really want to get another experience. It's a really awesome experience. It's probably hard to see, but there we go. No, I can see that. I got you. That's back from the all sixes and sevens era. Damn, you look like you're right around Tech's height. No one ever knew this, but actually me and him are, are actually the same height. We're both 5'8". So if you guys want to know how tall... I am, just think of the one of what Tech 9 says on He's a Mental Giant. You'll probably figure out how tall I am. <laughs> oh, I'm not figured I'd go ahead and share my idiocracy with everybody. The strange music, the strange relation coin that came with the pre order. Well, not with the pre order, it came with the deluxe edition. I'm sorry. I actually got this out and I toyed with it and I actually did kind of rub on it. I didn't think it could come apart. Just recently, just this past Monday, I actually figured out that there is a way that you can pop it open and actually play with your precious. My precious. <laughs> and for those of you who are wondering, this coin is very different than the one you see on the website. Yeah, this one actually, on one side it says Strange Music, and on the other it says Tech 9 Collabo Strange Relation. I don't know if you can see that. You probably can't because it is shiny. This is .999 silver coating, and it's shiny. But yeah. And if y'all don't think that's dope, there's something wrong with you. Hmm. Well, yeah. Collector coins are going for, what, 75 You get this right here for 
the price of the album, which I paid 24 bucks for the deluxe edition. And if you're a coin collector like me, that's what makes it cool. I'm not a coin collector, and I still think it's cool. I'm still going to hang on to it. I'm not going to go stick it on eBay like a bunch of people I've already seen. Especially if you like to collect old coins, because there's a lot of good old coins that they sell that are really nice. Like my mom, she has like a nice coin collection and stuff, and she says whenever it's her time to go, that that's one of the things she'll like give me and my sisters her coin collection. So, I mean, if you haven't picked up this album, go pick it up. I mean, and again, pick up the fresh coin. Get the deluxe edition. Uh, bleh, tongue twisted there for a second. Get the deluxe edition. Because you get, what do you get? You get four, four extra songs. Technically only three. One of them is an intro to the remix of Straight Out the Gate. And I think you should pick it up because Withdrawal is a really good song. It really showcases Chris Calico's voice. And if any of you are a big fan of Chris Calico, and especially his voice, then you definitely want to hear Withdrawal, because I really, I'm not, I mean, it's about basically a drug user, and I'm not, I've never been a big drug addict, but I was moved by it, you know? Like, even the artwork is pretty dope. Oh, hell yeah, dude, hell yeah. That's why when I did my unboxing, and I, was, when I uh, said I was worried about that being on there, I'm a big time fan of album artwork and that is fucking fresh. I'm gonna pull it out, see if we can actually get a better look at it. We can't, it's fucking dark. But that I've already would actually seen, make a fresh tattoo. I've already seen tattoos of it and it looks pretty fucking good as a tattoo. There we go. You see that a little better, it's not so reflective. The fucking serpent wrapping around the earth. And all I gotta say is this is probably also one of my other favorite collab of my th top three would be this, um, Welcome to Strange Land and Psychology 101. That's how it ranks for me. This one is definitely number one. And the way I rate albums is by how many times you hit the skip button. And I only hit skip once on this album. I just, you know, I guess maybe I could point out kind of the reasons why I'm not a big fan of which one. I guess I don't really care for the chorus and the beat all in all. I don't know. It's just in that part of the album where everything is going so good and you have which one come on. And I don't know. I don't. I can't really explain why I don't like it. I can only say I don't really care for the chorus, and that's just kind of what makes me skip it. It's been a while since Tech 9 did release a Collabo's album. Yeah. These are like the closest things, like if anyone ever didn't know, these are like the closest things to him like doing mixtapes and stuff that he'll do before an actual album. Oh yeah, these were his, uh, didn't he say these were his response to people wanting him to do a mixtape? He said, alright, here, when he did a Collabos album, that was when he did uh, Misery Loves Company. Well, I always think those are a good, it's a good way for him to like showcase like that he has talented artists on his label. He's not the only talented artist. Yeah. I have to say, though, I am still a little bit, I have some bitter feelings, you know, being a juggalo. <clears throat> I'd really like to see Twisted on an actual Tech 9 album. I mean, I know they've worked together, but I'd like to see him kind of give them the spotlight and show some of his fans Twisted's work. But, I mean, that's just me. I've always had those kind of bitter feelings. Well, I'm sure, like, he, he would put them on an album, or who knows? They should even just do a whole, like, album together, like, as a group. All I know is both Monoxide and Madrox have been chopping their asses off. And if he is indeed going to do a Worldwide Choppers 2, if he's got to throw them in it, and if he doesn't, then I'm sorry, his Chopper series is not done, because then he's going to have to hit Underground Choppers and only showcase Underground artists on it. And, that, and then in that case, he's going to have to throw on Kung Fu Vampire, because he can chop. Well, then he could even throw on one of the dudes from Potluck, Underrated. Oh, yeah, dude. Didn't Underrated do his own version of Worldwide Choppers? Yeah, and he straight killed it. Oh, yeah. I remember seeing the response video for Tech that Tech 9 did when he watched it. He's like, yeah, dude, he fucking murdered it. It's like, why have you not put him on one? When I actually saw Potluck open for Twisted, like, Underrated actually spit his verse from that live. That's fucking awesome. You know, and I know um, or it was at the end of Hard when he says he doesn't even want to try working with people anymore, just do what he's been doing to make music for his technicians to bang. 
I hope he sticks to that. Because I really don't care. I mean, I'm just going to put this out there. I know a lot of people are probably looking forward to it. But I honestly don't care if he ever collaborates with Eminem or not. I'm not a big Eminem fan. If he does do it, it's cool. But I just like seeing him do what he does. I don't really care for seeing a new act. You know, it's not something I'm out there necessarily doing. You know, saying, go work with this person, you know, other than Twisted and Come Through Vampire. Those are the only two dream collaborations I have. But if it came down to it, if he had to do new stuff with new people or just keep doing what he's doing, I'd rather just see him keep doing what he's doing because he's doing it good all on his own. Well, a lot of people probably never knew this, but actually back in 99, they did do a song together. Technically, they did because they were on the Wake Up Show, the anthem. But people go, oh, it's because other artists were on there, so it still counts. And you know what? And here's my thing. On the anthem, Tech 9 was flowing so good with the beat, and then it stops, and you start getting Eminem on there rambling on. The problem I have with Eminem, a lot of times, I don't think he flows very good. I mean, yeah, his older stuff does sound kind of better than his newer stuff. That, I will admit. Yeah. But so, I also did like that song because it had the legendary KRS-One on it. <laughs> But I think what some people, what they want to do is they want to, like, try to see them, like, out-rap each other, and they just want to see, like, both of them together, like, in the actual studio working together. Yeah, I can, I can understand that, but bottom line is Tech Nine's going to fucking murder Eminem. There's no doubt about it to me. I actually I always thought it would be cool to make a t-shirt or, you know, something kind of along those lines, like a bandana or whatever, and it'll just say, like, fucking hit list on it, and it'll have people he's worked with, people Tech Nine's worked with, and then people he wants to work with, and the ones he's worked with, it'll be crossed out, and it'll be like, it'll say, like, murdered, basically just saying people he's worked with and people he's killed it with. <laughs> well, there's a reason why he calls himself a lyrical murderer. Oh, yeah, dude. I think that'd be cool to have a t-shirt or a bandana that has a list of people he's worked with. And, I mean, I'm talking all the way Busta Rhymes. I mean, yeah, Busta Rhymes did pretty well kill it on Worldwide Choppers, but I still love Tech the best because, he's like, you know, just like Busta Rhymes said, he sounded like five different fucking people. He did because he was changing up his flow, like, so much in that song, and he did it very cleverly to where he did sound like five different people. Oh, yeah. Because I went back and listened to it, and I'm like, wow, he is right. He does sound like five different people. <laughs> That's what I like about Tech 9 He doesn't just ramble over a beat. He actually listens to it, and he becomes part of it, I, I'd say. Well, that's why I've always liked him, because he's even said that to rap that fast, it takes lots of practice. You have to be good at math and stuff to be able to do it. <laughs> well, he gave away his secret of how he raps so fast and hard. And he says, like, rolling the tongue and stuff. You have to be good at, like, rolling the tongue and stuff. No, I'm serious, dude. He gave away his secret in hard. He tells you why, how he raps so fast. You know what I'm talking about? Because in hard, he actually says, when people ask how I rap so fast, I say poon licking. It's a good way to exercise your tongue. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. The reason why he said that at the end of, like, Hard, he just wants to do what he's always been doing. It's probably reminiscent on that song he did on Killer called Why You Ain't Call Me, like, why these rappers ain't, like, hooking up with him. Yeah. That's probably reminiscent on that because he's still, like, trying to reach out to some people and they're not, like, getting a hold of him. Well, I guess from what I've gathered, they say the reason why he hasn't been able to get a good song with Eminem is because... The timeline, the deadline is so, you know, short. And I remember hearing back probably a couple of years ago, I remember them saying, if you're on Strange Music, you know, you got to be ready to go. You know, we set you a deadline, let's go, let's do an album. Well, that's why people are now saying, is he going to have more time? Because for those of you people that don't know, this actually came with an ad for Tech Nine's next full-length album, Special Effects, which is supposed to come out next year in January. So that's like eight, eight months to work on this. Yeah, and that's two days after my birthday, January 25th. Send me a present, everybody. And that makes some people question, is he doing too work? Gonna, is he rushing it too fast, or is eight months plenty of time? Attack, it's plenty of time. I mean, 
he did something else. Like, did he do a tour? And then he had like two or three albums to record. Um, therapy. Dude, he could do it. I think he could do it. I mean, sure, it was an EP, but I think he could get it out in time. Well, and I think he even but, said in a recent interview he's no longer going to do EPs, apparently. I kind of hope so, because I, I enjoy... I'd rather see a full-length album. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not a big fan of the cardboard sleeve. And I just fucking dropped my disc all over the place. I'm not a big fan of the cardboard sleeve. So I hope he does kind of stop with the EPs. Oh, one thing I think it would be pretty fucking cool. This has nothing to do with Strangulation, but it's definitely Tech 9 related. I think he should re-release KOD in like a special box set where all the albums are kind of connected. Did you ever see that video I did way back when it first started for the album by System of a Down? How it's all folded together? Yeah. That's what he should do. And I think I could really get his attention because he's a System of a Down fan. I want to mention that. I want to go to a VIP event and mention that to him. That he needs to do either a double album, like the System of a Down, Mesmerize, and Hypnotize. Or he just needs to re-release KOD and make it to where all the EPs that follow can all be connected together. I think that would be awesome. Especially since Boiling Point clearly says underneath it, KOD Collection. Well, he did release something like that. It was like either called KOD Collection or the KOD Trilogy, and it like had the lost scripts scripts of KOD come with seepage and stuff. Oh yeah, I remember that. The, the, the little double EP, and then they did one for Eba and Boiling Point. Yeah, it's like exclusive at Best Buy in some stores, which is actually pretty cool. And now it's actually on the website. No, but what I mean is like you know you. You flip this open, and then like somewhere in here you'd have you'd have like a contraption or something, and you'd have like the lost scripts, and you could pull that out, and like behind it in another pocket there'd be like seepage. I think that would be pretty fucking sick. That's true. So I'm gonna like fucking take a bunch of my CDs with me and go to a VIP event. He'd be like, "Oh, you want me to sign all this?" I'm like, no, I just want to explain something to you because I want you to do it. <laughs> well, that's one reason why I've always liked strange music. Like, people think I just like them for, like, music. I'm like, no, if you watch that Travis, like, O'Gwen interview, I actually respect him for a business standpoint, too. I've yet to watch that, dude. You're the second person in the second hangout I've done in the last week that's mentioned that, and I still haven't watched it. I just haven't taken the time to listen to it, I guess, because TJ Beastmaster was talking about it in our last hangout. And I've yet to listen to it. It's actually a really good interview. Like I told people, you'll actually respect Strange Music more as a business if you listen to it. Oh, for real. I've already got a lot of respect. Like I was saying, I I may not be a fan of all the artists on Strange Music, but I respect Strange Music. The reason I wrapped the snake in the bat is because I respect what Strange Music represents. The music they put out is so different. They offer you any kind of thing you want. You know, Mayday's got that kind of... Mayday actually reminds me of the old school Lincoln Park. When I listen to um, Take Me to Your Leader, that actually reminds me of kind of hybrid theory Lincoln Park stuff. It, you know, they've got different flavors for whatever floats your boat, whatever tickles your fancy, and that's what I love about strange music. That's why I rep the snick in the back, even, that, even though I may not be a fan of everybody on the roster, I respect the hell out of it for what it stands for. And it's not like your typical hip hop nowadays. It's something that would sound good mainstream, but at the same time, it like it, it won't like get played on there except sometimes. Yeah. But that's why you'll like that interview with Travis O'Gwen. He like talks about just because. Like Fragile's getting played on the radio, that doesn't mean nothing because the what the song is about. Like, just think, everyone, it's a song about critics, and it's a song about fuck critics, and that song got to get played on the radio. That's fresh. Yep. You never see a song like that being played on the radio, and that's actually cool. I know because it plays on a local station here where I live, and I think it's cool. Uh, I haven't heard it on the radio, but I've got the town I live in is kind of smaller, and we have three radio stations, a country station, a classic rock station, 
and I think we get another radio station from a, 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 a town 20 miles to the south. And that's about, if you have a good stereo, you can pick up further away, but I don't even have a car right now. But I think that'd be pretty cool to hear it on the radio. I definitely wouldn't think of it as, oh, they're sold out. Hell no, dude. They've accomplished something without changing the way they do what they do. I know, and Tech Nines even said in interviews, how have I changed the way I have? It's a song talking about fuck critics, and that song they chose to get played on the radio. Uh-huh. Because it's fucking catchy, and it's fucking awesome, and it, it, it's very meaningful. Well, in the song, it, when you hear it, I've always said it makes you think of, like, an early 90s hip-hop song. Mm-hmm. That's what it brings me back to, like, the hip-hop that was, like, back in the 90s, like, early 90s. That was, like, mixed with jazz and stuff. And I've always list like, it's because Kendrick Lamar, he is one of those few new hip-hop artists that actually does sound really good. Just because he gets played on the radio, he doesn't rap about the typical thing that certain hip-hop artists do today. Yeah. Dude's got a good flow. Everyone tells me he's overrated. I'm like, no, he's not. He's just an actual true MC and he knows how to spit really good. You know, I've heard that too. The same guy that I told you about that's in love with Lil Wayne, he yeah. said the same thing to me. He's like, Kendrick Lamar is overrated. I was like, oh, I don't listen to Kendrick Lamar. I listen to what I listen to. <laughs> I don't even know how he got on that topic, but he just like completely threw that out there and I'm like, I don't know, it doesn't affect me nothing. <laughs> I'm sorry, but Kendrick Lamar would destroy Lil Wayne when it comes to rapping. Oh god, yeah. Because Kendrick Lamar doesn't rap about bullshit. He actually has meaning behind his music. I mean, it's not every day you see, like, a hip-hop artist sometimes rapping from, like, the point of view of a parent of a gang member and stuff, and that's what he does in some of his music. Yeah. He, like, puts himself in the parents' shoes and what the parents are going through. Hence while, why his, like, second or debut album is called Good Kid Mad City, because he never got into gang violence. He was just a good kid living in a gang invested city and even Tech 9 applaud him for his verse that he did on that control verse because he actually woke up the hip hop community with that verse and is making a lot of people step up their game now <laughs> so that's why every time when I do a hip hop related video I'm telling people see real hip hop's alive you just gotta look for it mm -hmm. it doesn't just have to be old hip hop there's some good new hip hop out there you just gotta look for it some people are just too lazy to do it. Well, what else do we have to talk about Strangulation? We did kind of get off topic there a little bit. As far as artists that I would like to see Tech 9 work with, like I always say a Tech 9 and Rob Zombie collaboration would be straight fire. Oh, that'd be fucking awesome. Tech even said he wants to work with Ozzy Osbourne. Well, I'm not a big Ozzy fan, but that'd still be pretty fucking cool. You know, I don't know. I think I like the idea of Tech 9 just rubbing elbows with different people like that, I think it'd be pretty cool, even if I'm not a fan of said person that he's working with. I'm not a fan of Lil Wayne, but I still thought it was pretty cool when he worked with Lil Wayne, just because, you know, here's a mainstream artist who actually stopped and took notice of somebody who's not even in the mainstream. You know, it takes a lot of fucking talent to do that. Well, and I did like that verse that he spit on Fuck Food where he said, I eat the pussy like the Last Supper. I thought that was still pretty funny and clever. Yeah. It's not going to make religious people happy, but what can you do? Yeah. Well, and then, uh, you know, again, um, talking about selling out, people were pissed at him for doing that song with Lil Wayne. It's called Fuck Food. It's basically about... It's about eating pussy, it's about sex. The title is Fuck Food, the chorus says Fuck Food, you can't really play that on the radio. And if they do, they'd have to blurt it out a lot. Uh-huh. I and mean, at least with Fragile, they only have to blurt out a few cuss words to where you probably wouldn't even notice. And in a lot of ways, that's that's the radio conforming to Tech 9 That's them, you know, changing their ways for them instead of the other way around. Well, that's why it says, they don't bring me into their world, I bring them into my world. Yep. Like you said, some of the things Lil Wayne said in Fox Food was pretty real clever. I don't Overall, I don't care for Lil Wayne's verse, but it's a Tech 9 song. It's 
Tech Nine featuring Lil Wayne. It's Lil Wayne on a Tech Nine song doing a Tech Nine themed song. Exactly, because a lot of people probably forget that Tech Nine has done songs like that in the past. Well, yeah, the actually where they got the, the name and everything for Fuck Food was off of Hunterish, off of Coyote. Because there was a part in Hunterish when they said, "Gal, sure looked like Fuck Food to me," and the song was born from it. So the song was meant to happen, and just it, it, Lil Wayne happening to be on it. 